people who otherwise were probably very sane and you know live in in the world in a secular world will do crazy things to make it seem like they're good a lot of it has to do with this notion that religion has uh, essentially religion essentially has co-opted morality and mm -hmm. ethics mm -hmm. and that therefore if you're higher up in the church you deserve more respect in some way shape or form and i think it's related to a lot of that i think a lot of our our um so how do we separate that because when when i hear people say that it seems so obvious to me that 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 has so little to do with reality when you think of the wars that have been fought in the name of religion the amount of people who have been Kill the name of religion. Well, I think David molestation actually molestation and all kinds of awful things. These things probably a lot of them would happen without religion or wouldn't. I mean, well, religion, religion wants to make itself bigger. Okay, religion wants to make itself more important than it is. Okay, religion is just the belief in an invisible man in the sky, and religion knows it. So it puts it tries to put its fingers where it can't be, where it isn't, so that you know you have two arms. Well, you have two arms because you're a Jew. You're welcome. You're a good person because you're religious. You're welcome. If you're one of the out group, you don't have this. Religion is so important to you. It's much more than an invisible man in the sky belief. That's the way religion entrenches itself and makes people fear leaving it. it it's, it's actually a, a really scary function of brainwashing that it actually makes people fear leaving it by making people fear the out group by assuming a much bigger role in their lives than it really should right. be. And then of it course also, I think, has a lot to do with the power structure. I mean, certainly, uh, again, and coming from a Catholic background, I'm very aware that, you know, Catholicism, the church is basically a military and geopolitical structure, and, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the, the church was, a, was a, a power structure, has a city-state, thanks to Mussolini, by the way, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, the church was was a... Wait, let's not gloss over that. The church literally has a city-state. I mean, it literally has oh, a yeah. city-state, and yeah. it was by, the it was by uh, arrangement with Mussolini, because Mussolini wanted the backing of the church, the fascist party wanted the backing of the church, and there was a lot of uh, political struggle in there, and so an agreement was hammered out to where the Roman Catholic Church could go back 700 years to the Middle Ages and have its own city-state mm -hmm. with the blessing of Mussolini, who would leave it alone and give it all, all its uh, international authority and what have you, just basically uh, to not get into a fight with however many millions of Catholics in Italy. Uh, but the power structure of that also, I think, you know, feeds down to this day and age, that the church feels like it, it, it should be a world power and yeah. will do anything it can to create the illusion of that. Mm -hmm. And it has a seat in the UN, and they come to they come to to America, and they tell us what laws we should pass. Can you imagine if the Prime Minister of France came to America and said we should change our laws to be more like them? Right. But when or tell us what to do about abortion. Yeah. yeah. Um, imagine that the, the the leader of another state comes here to campaign for our laws. Yeah. Did you guys see this? That just this past week or a couple days ago. Uh, Bernie Sanders met with the Pope, mm. and then the Pope issued a statement after and said it wasn't a political meeting. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll talk a little bit about Bernie in a second, yeah. who was basically an atheist Jew, or at least not, or maybe not a Jew anymore, or yeah. whatever, however you want to find that. But I thought, this is so pandering from both of these guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're telling me that the uh, candidate for President of the United States is meeting with the Pope. It's not political. Yeah, you know, when I was a kid, uh, Kennedy, was running for president, and I was too young to understand it at the time. But in you know, in in still very young, I, this stuff was fresh, and I began to sort of re-examine it. The whole issue about him being a Catholic, and would would that mean that the Vatican is running the U.S. government because of his commitment to the Catholicism and all this and all that? And all that argument also contributed to sort of fraying my belief and and respect for it all, but also making it very clear that there is a component about wh whether or not you believe there's an invisible man in the sky and whether or not you go to hell when you die with the presidency of the United States that 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 cl clash was so apparent that it yeah. just it, it became part of that what what is going on here you know and then as I grew older I saw that the politics of it is really what it's all about yeah do you guys see it that some religions sort of have easier ways out than other ones so for example Christianity because there are you know we have Santa Claus who everyone realizes isn't real mm -hmm. by the time they're you know five or six or the Easter Bunny or a couple of these other things it's almost like a hint to the kid that there's some made-up stuff here that's the way I've always viewed it. They're, they're sort of saying to the kid, there's some made up shit here, and as you're gonna grow older, you're gonna realize some of this other shit's made up too. 
Yeah. Versus Judaism has none of that. And I, I, for me, I always remember thinking if, if any, every Jewish holiday is basically saying not all of us got killed. That's right. the, right, every holiday is, ah, well, we didn't all die during right. Passover, we didn't all die during Perm, <laughs> right. and I, or whatever it is. And I always remember thinking during all the holidays, this God guy must be incredibly fucked up. <laughs> that not, he didn't kill all of us and now we have to celebrate him. This is like, you know, this is craziness. Yeah. But there isn't the, um, the illusion, you know, there's no, there's no uh, Hanukkah Harry except on Saturday Night Live. There's no Hanukkah Harry, but there is secular Judaism, right? right? So you can, you can completely ditch the, 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 the Jewish God and still be called Jewish. So there's that out, right? okay? The, the, there's an out that's not an out. There's an, okay, you don't have to believe, but you're still a Jew. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, the, the vast majority of Jews out there still consider me a Jew mm -hmm. because you can't leave <laughs> according to their religion. I was born to a Jewish mother, therefore I am Jewish by race. So there is, there's no way for me to leave, so there is, there's but no one's going to kill you for leaving either, which is an important. No one's going to uh, kill me for leaving, yeah. but I can't leave because right. I'm a Jew, anyways, as far right. as I'm concerned. So the out there is that even if you don't believe, you're still a Jew. You're yeah. still an in group. But that also has a lot to do with the confusion of of the religion yeah. and uh, uh, nation of origin. Yes. Oh, well, it's, it's deliberately confusing. I mean, they they do it deliberately. It's, Judaism is the only. Um, ethnicity, nationality, and this is the reason why it's bullshit, uh, because it's, it's, it's all about special exceptions. You know, if you have a, a person of one race marries a person of another race, you have a child of a mixed race, unless you're Jewish. Right. Because then if the mother's Jewish, you're all Jewish, and it's a race. And Judaism is a race, and if you, if you have one person from one race and he marries another race, that new person doesn't become the first race, unless you're Jewish. Right, and but you, you could be, convert. you could come from a, a, a black mother and a white father and be, so you're... Yes, but, be, but if, you have, if you have a Jewish mother and a Gentile father, you're right. a full Jew. <laughs> so, right, right, right. So they just pretend, they, it's all about special pleadings, it's all about exceptions to the rule. It's like, uh, I mean, think about it, like I was saying offline, if you have chicken chow mein, is that Buddhist food? Is falafel Muslim food? No, it's all about locations. You know, we all have cultures that are based on locations, based on nationalities, based on borders, based on, based on um, fixed points, unless it's Jewish. Mm -hmm. In which case, they just make it up. And they call it, oh, well, I'm, what's your nationality? Oh, I'm Jewish. No, I am Eastern European from descent. And I have no blood shared with the Jews from Ethiopia or the Jews from the Sephardic areas. I don't have that. Right, you have a, you, if you believed, you would have a set of beliefs in common, but not a... And, and that's what makes a Jew a Jew. Yeah. It's the set of beliefs. It's the Torah. The yeah. only commonality among Jews, Ethiopian, Sephardic, Ashkenazim, is the Torah. Not even the Talmud is common. So, I mean, if you, Ethiopian Jews wouldn't know a bagel if it bit them on the ass. <laughs> Sephardic Jews don't eat bagels, lux, and cream cheese. They don't have, they don't dance the hora. They don't look like me. They don't even have names like mine. Right. Okay. It, it's all Eastern European, but Judaism takes the credit. Like I said before, you have a culture. It's Judaism. You're welcome. Right. So isn't some of this the, the trappings of religion, though? Because, you know, we can go wherever we want in this, the rest of this conversation. Well, again, I but, but, but we somehow get caught up in some of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's sort of the danger of this, it's hard. But that's not by accident. Yeah. That's been designed over millennia mm -hmm. to function that way. So then we take three people that are, all, that, that the commonality here is that we are choosing not to believe until there is evidence. How right. do you spread that message effectively? Because I think it's incredibly hard to spread. I see it waking up, but I even, I, I've said this on the show many times, when I'm on Twitter or even in the YouTube comments, that many of my fans who are atheists are still anonymous. Right. And to me, that's like they're in the closet, the way gay people had to be in the closet for a long time. And I really want to help that transition if I can do anything. So how do you, how do you deal with some of that? Well, for me personally, and, and, and there is a difference between myself and David here, because David has, has chosen to get into the politics of this as a, as a livelihood yeah. and a, as, a, as a mission. Uh, uh, I personally, on a personal level, uh, I understand what, you know, how people turn off to Dawkins and a lot of you know, atheists are strident, this, that, this, that. Uh, I understand where that comes from. I think it's misguided, 
but I can understand where that comes from, and that's all about form over content. Mm -hmm. So it's misguided in that they're, they just don't like the technique that those guys are using, which goes to what you were saying before. <laughs> to a certain degree, for the, a, a lot of people that feel that way often just are offended that their beliefs are being offended, right. you know? But for me personally, what it is is uh, I, I don't try and spread it, but I try to be open and clear about it. Mm -hmm. And if someone asks me to have the conversation, I will have the conversation. I come from the show, not tell school of, of you know, of this kind of thing, which is where if somebody asks me about it, I'll sit, but we'll have a conversation all day long. But I don't care about whether or not you choose to believe or not believe. I don't get into arguments with Christians. I don't, <laughs> I don't have those arguments unless I'm invited to have a conversation. And I find that that it, it tends to be very effective because the people who ask me about it, knowing you know, that, I'm, that I'm open about it, the people who ask me about it tend to be the ones who are wondering and doubting anyway. And uh, then the conversation becomes uh, an authentic one as opposed to a, 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 a in real life trolling. Sure. <laughs> well, what's know? interesting is that I knew you, I've known you now for a couple of years, and you know, we've, we've smoked weed and talked about this stuff, right? And I knew who you were before I knew you. Um, but all these, I didn't realize you were that much into this idea, and I've had many conversations with you about this stuff, and it was, and we were just, I was just like, ah, Paul's an interesting, smart guy, and we're, well, it's, it's we're become, discussing some stuff. It's become you know? more meaningful to me because of politics. It's become more meaning to me because of uh, the division. It's become more meaning to me as we move into what is essentially a holy war in 2016. We understand things about galaxies <laughs> thousands and millions of light years away. We, we, we're taking photographs of planets beyond our solar system and we're still, and, and there's a, a, a religious war happening on the planet. Yeah. So that's made the topic more uh, um, compelling for me and um, uh, just the idea of celebrating non-belief more meaningful. It's like, it, 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 again, it's because, not because I'm trying to convince anybody of anything, but because if you are somebody doubting your faith or you are somebody who's sitting back going, is this crazy or am I crazy <laughs> or am I going to go to hell because I don't believe this stuff really? And when you push comes to shove, you know, to just say, no, you're not alone. There's a lot of people out there. And you know what? I, there's a lot of great people that you can spend time with who aren't going to hit you with fire and brimstone about anything. Yeah, I mean, that's it has where. It to that... do with living a good life and a decent life and a moral life and an ethical life. In fact, it becomes very clear as you move away from people who use religiosity as an example, you know, as, as an illustration of their ethics and moral morality, everything, you begin to see really how shallow most of it is. Yeah. Uh, so that's the way, that's that's what it is. It's like, unless somebody asks me about it, I, I'm, I don't really have the conversation. Yeah, so I want to get to that, some of the fake moral stuff. Um, but one thing I have for you is, why do you think people are so afraid to just say, I don't know? Because I don't think anything that either one of you have said here, or that I've said, is anything really more than that. No. I, it, I it's, don't know. I don't know, but and and that doesn't mean a god did it. Okay, the entire right. god argument takes it, takes that to the next step. I don't know, therefore God did it. Okay? Right. Therefore yeah. I'm going to make some stuff up. I'm going or to make someone some else stuff that made or some pretend, stuff up. and pretend to believe it. I'm going to believe it, or I'm going to pretend to believe it. And you know, it's Paul was talking about um, pushing atheism, and and he's right. I he, I'm on the opposite side of it. I think that promoting atheism is a good deed. Yeah. Okay. I see religion as a poison that is inflicted on children usually, and it's a good thing to help them away from it. Um, the analogy that I use is, is it, is it okay if, if your mother is poor, because my mother was, um, and she was paying money to a psychic, and I, I sat her down and I stopped her from going to a psychic, okay? I think that's a good thing for a son to do. Yeah. But when we do that to religion, closely held religious beliefs, people get offended. Now they've got the same amount of proof, zero, okay? The sum total, I'm gonna make sure I say this correctly, the sum total of scientifically valid proof for anything supernatural ever in world history is zero. Prove me wrong once and I'll quit my job. 
and I put that in writing, in, the, in, in fighting God. And people don't like it when you equate religion down to those other scams. When you, when you say, okay, you know, this is a scam too. And by the way, your parents were victims of the scam, and your grandparents, and they tried to inflict that stuff on you, and it was wrong of them. They thought they were doing good. But people don't like that because they have to admit that everybody in their family is wrong. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you're talking about a believer, you're talking about making them understand that they're going to die. You're talking about making them understand that everybody who's already dead is already dead. You're also talking about adults who were raised, this was woven into the fabric of their identity and their existence from the time they were learning the language, and, and it becomes very, very challenging. Still to have to, to talk about it. it. Right, Still so that's, so you need almost some sort of cognitive dissonance there. You need to say, to separate, well, my, I know my grandma, she was a good woman, but Yeah, my wow, mother was she, great. Yeah. But, but, but Paul was talking about the scientists before who believe in God. That, that's the same thing. You have that cognitive dissonance because of the brainwashing that people receive as their, as children. It's not okay. Okay, it's not a, uh, something that we should find socially acceptable. Brainwashing your children into thinking that something is wrong is right, yeah. is bad. And we need to own people who, we need to talk to people who do that. We need to call them on their shit. This is child abuse and it's not okay. And um, if somebody is the victim of this brainwashing, it is a good thing to help them away from it. It's a good thing to help them realize the sum total of proof for anything supernatural ever is zero. So in effect, you would say this is like uh, a parent that by the time the kid is 16 is still going, ah, the tooth fairy's real. Exactly. Right? Like, the tooth fairy's real. And, and if you don't believe it, you're going to get it. out of my house. Yeah. Well, that's you know, an that's interesting the... question. How many of those parents do you think actually believe the tooth fairy is real? I mean, in terms of religion, uh, you know, I mean, how many people right, that, who, right. who are instilling this in their kids actually really do believe it themselves? And this is the problem. And this is the problem because, see, people are so enthralled with not being atheists <laughs> that atheists are drilling religion into their kids. They're joining churches after they have <clears throat> kids yeah. so that they can inflict their shit onto those kids. Yeah. The stuff that they don't even believe themselves. And they think that that's the moral thing to do because even as atheists, they're still still victims of that same brainwashing that religion is somehow good. I know someone, a personal friend of mine, who right this very moment has three kids, uh, sending them all to religious school. I'm not going to say what religion, uh, but it's not one of the, it's not Judaism or Christianity. Uh, right now, sending there, and he's a total non-believer, and he said, I'm doing well, it makes my parents happy. Mm -hmm. Can you and, imagine and, that? Yeah. And this is someone who I know to be totally rational, totally decent, you know. This is somebody who's taking away his children's ability to designate fact from fiction, to tell fact from fiction. He's, he's literally indoctrinating his children into something he knows is a lie in order to please his parents who still believe in a lie. And we don't even know that they really believe. They may be doing know. it because their parents because, and their parents. And, and has he asked his parents? A lot of parents don't believe I'll find it. out. Yeah, but even if they do, you don't indoctrinate your children into a lie. That's injuring your children. And we need to call it that. If you're teaching lies to a child and taking away their ability to tell fact from fiction, you are injuring your children. It is a bad thing to do, even if your parents want you to.